What's going on, everyone? My name's Obi, and welcome back to Courtside Financial, the podcast where we break down the moves in business and technology that actually matter. Today's October 22nd, and we need to talk about something that actually just happened yesterday. CATL, you know, the world's largest battery manufacturer, just announced casually that they have over 700 battery swapping stations. And I know what you guys are thinking, Obi, you've been talking about Neo and battery swapping for years. Does this mean that you're actually, you were actually right about Neo? So look, I'm not here to say I told you so, but I'm also not not saying that. So let's break down what this actually means. So here's the setup. For a decade, 10 full years, NEO has been the lone wolf in this battery swap wildness. They built 3,500 stations connecting 550 cities across China, plus another 27,000 charging piles. And people called them crazy. Why not just build chargers? Battery swapping is too expensive. It'll never scale. Everybody had everything to say, quite literally. But check this out. NEO didn't hit 10,000 weekly sales until October this year. That's patience, family. That's playing the long game while everyone's laughing at you. And now CATL's founder, Zhang, is literally echoing what we've been saying. High investment, long cycle, extreme cost, but the payoff is real. Now let me break down why this CATL news is such a big deal. When the world's biggest battery maker, the people who are actually manufacturing the battery, start to hop into battery swapping, that shows that this isn't just some type of fad. This shows a real tectonic shift. This shows validation. Zane gave us three reasons why CATL is going all in on battery swapping. And I want to unpack each one because this is where things get spicy. First off is that battery costs are plummeting. Remember when the batteries of a vehicle used to be the third of a co- a third of the entire cost? That was bleeding automakers dry and making EVs unaffordable for people. But now costs are dropping so fast that building massive uh, battery swap infrastructure is actually financially viable. And here's the kicker. At scale, swapping batteries will eventually actually cost the same as charging at home. But you get full batteries in three minutes instead of waiting hours. That's not just convenience. That's a complete paradigm shift. Second is that technology just moves too fast. Think about it. If you bought an EV in 2022 without a swappable battery, you're stuck in 2022's technology. No fast charging improvements, lower capacity, less safety features. You're locked in. But battery swap, it's essentially a membership to the future. You're always riding the latest tech. When solid state um, batteries drop and they will drop, your car stays relevant in a world of solid solid state batteries. This is not like the old removable phone batteries where you just popped out the batteries uh, to be able to charge them. This is continuous technological upgrades without even having to buy a new car. That's a completely different value proposition. And third is that battery swap stations are energy storage powerhouses. And this is where it gets really interesting from a business model perspective. These aren't just gas stations replacements, they're distributed energy storage facilities. They charge during off-peak hours when electricity is cheap and swap those batteries during peak hours. That's arbitrage, guys. That's a margin game on top of their service revenue. Now let's talk about who really needs this technology because this is where the rubber meets the rope. Literally, the battery swap model is perfect for high frequency use cases. I'm talking about ride hailing drivers, delivery drivers, people who can't afford to be stopped or sit at a charging station for 30 minutes because their business model depends on them being on the road. Delivery drivers on electric scooters, they're already doing battery swaps um, at centralized depots because their business model depends on uptime, not downtime. Fast charging sounds good on paper. 80% in 30 minutes, right? But do the math, that's only 16 cars in an eight hour shift. Battery swap, three minutes per car. The efficiency gap is too massive to ignore. And here's what people don't realize. Unified battery swapping maximizes resource utilization. Instead of thousands of batteries sitting in garages aging and decaying. They're in a massive system with regular inspection, optimal charging patterns, and efficient rotation. That's much better for battery longevity and the environment. Now here's where the story gets interesting. This isn't just NEO and CATL anymore. The Battery Swap Alliance now includes BAIC, Dongfeng, GAC, Ion, Geely, Cherry, Hongkui, and Shangon. Even JD Auto's first model, which launched with GAC and CATL, 
is battery swap. So you got to ask yourself, why are all these manufacturers jumping in now? Because they see the end game. Once solid state batteries hit mass production, the EV game is going to explode and hybrids will start looking real outdated real fast. Automakers have thin margins selling the cars, but the swap stations, that's recurring revenue guys. That's rental income that flows whether the broader market is up or down. Think about it like Wanda's real estate model. The more EVs on the road, the more stable the income from your tenant base is. This isn't just supporting car sales. This is building an entirely separate uh, revenue model in retail electricity sales. Now, I'm a Neo Bull. You guys know this. I know this. But let me give you guys an objective read. Battery swapping is hard. It requires massive capital, years of patience, ecosystem cooperation. These are things that most companies just can't execute. That's why only Neo stuck with it for so long. But here's the thing. Difficult things require long-term thinking. Those are exactly the kind of moats that create generational wealth. When everyone else is optimizing for quarterly earnings, the companies building decade-long uh, infrastructure plays are the ones who are quite literally uh, propelling themselves into the future. That shared power bank comparison is perfect. Remember when people clown the business, who's paying money to rent a power bank? Now those companies are silently printing money. It's going to be the same with battery swap technology, in my opinion. This is just my uh, thoughts on the future. So did Neo make the right bet? With CATL now at over 700 stations and accelerating with major automakers joining the alliance with the economics finally making sense as a bat as battery costs drop. Yeah, I'd say they did. But here's my take for the courtside family. This isn't about being right on one company. This is about determining which infrastructure plays will determine the next phase of the EV revolution. Home charging will serve suburban and rural users. Public charging stations will have some occasional use, but battery swap is going to dominate high frequency commercial use that has the most value. The ride hailing market alone is massive. And as battery swap stations become as common as gas station, gas stations and the technology goes from niche to mainstream, the picture is going to entirely change. Look, I'm not saying that every EV company needs to start swapping their batteries, but I am saying the companies who dismissed it as impossible might start looking at CAT. TL's 700 stations and NEO's over 3,500 stations and start realizing that they missed the chance to build the moat for themselves. The future of energy replenishment obviously is not a one-size-fits-all. It's a three-part ecosystem in my opinion. Battery swap for high-frequency users, home charging for convenience, and public charging for uh, flexibility. And the players who recognize this early, they're about to eat. All right, Quartzite family, that's what I got for you guys today. This has been another episode of the Quartzite Financial Podcast. If you found this episode useful, insightful, informative, at the very least entertaining, click that notification bell um, icon, smash the like button, leave a comment down below, share the video so we can educate as many people as possible, continue to get this message out, and that ultimately helps us out as Neo Bulls and helps us out as an EV community uh, as a whole. So please help us out with that. I put these videos out for free. Um, and I hope you guys have a great, I don't even know what day it is today. It's Wednesday, right? Wednesday, October 22nd. Yeah, you guys have a great Wednesday, great hump day, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. This is Obi with the CF Podcast. Thanks for watching. Bye.